for this huddle, we just want to talk about, I want to continue Jay's uh, foundation's call from this morning, talking about uh, how to get your offer accepted. Is that correct? Hmm? You know, just touch real quick on what you covered to, on the foundation's call. Real quick. I don't know. Real I quick. took almost 40 minutes to do it, so... <laughs> Um, I think the thing that we're, we probably want to focus on the, the most really is presenting a complete offer package. Absolutely. That is number one. You ask any listing agent mm -hmm. out there and having a complete full offer with no question about what's missing from this field, what do you mean by this, um, including having your pre-approval letter. Yep. Using Greg, if you can, or whichever loan officer you 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 happen to be using, having them call. I don't know if you covered that. You know what? We did. I didn't cover that. Yeah, but that's so, a good one. I need to add so to my. So having script. having your lender call that listing agent. That's a big one as well. It's something that'll set your offer apart from from everyone else's. But I'll tell you, there are a the biggest thing is having a complete offer. Yeah. Make sure you have all your exhibits in there. If you are only presenting the purchase, the eight pages of the purchase and sale agreement, that's like turning in your homework in high school with your name written at the top, and that's about it. Yeah, disservice to your client. You, you absolutely are doing a disservice to your client by presenting an offer that is incomplete, that does not have all the information necessary. And if you're making an agent, a listing agent, track you down, for the stuff that should be in it initially, how hard do you think that listing agent is going to work on your, you know, it, it, to try to even entertain your offer when they're in this market looking at five to 10 to 15, 20 others? And yours is incomplete. And, and yours before incomplete. you even get started, they're tracking you down for information. They're immediately going, this agent is not going to be fun to work with. Or they yep. don't know what they're talking about. Hmm? Or they don't know what they're talking yep. about. Yep. And they're unprofessional, they're incompetent, or unprofessional, or just don't know. So getting that offer in complete, um, including getting seller's property disclosure, lead-based paint, getting all that stuff from the listing agent and signed up front. In the instance where they don't provide it to you and you're trying to get it in, um, you can write a special step seller to provide these items, all except the lead-based paint within 24 or 48 hours of binding agreement so that you're not holding up getting your offer in. I know that's a big one, you're hounding yeah. the listing agent. If the listing agent isn't responding to you, that's one way to take care of it, is to say the agent to provide it within 48 hours. Agents, uh, seller's failure to provide this information, buyer can terminate and get their earnest money deposit back. Makes sense. Yes. And that gives you, if they don't include those disclosures on the MLS where you can download them and automatically put them in your package, that gives you the opportunity to call up that listing agent and schmooze them. Yep. All right. Say, hey, and, and literally, if you present yourself in a way that is confident, that is uh, professional, and you use language like, hey, what can I, other than the obvious, the net to seller, what, what can I do to write an offer that, that yeah. writes you a winning offer? They're gonna go, this person knows what the heck they're doing, they're professional, they're gonna be easy to work with, and if you're that person versus the, um, well, I, I don't have this, and can you please provide that over, and you be a jerk in the process, yes. guess what? So when you're asking for the, uh, for the identity, hey, I just wanna, submit a complete offer to you so that you're not scrambling around. I'm trying to make your life easier. Yep. Make it presented as though you're trying to help them. So if you can provide this stuff to me now, I can get it up front and then, you know, my offer will be complete. We'll be able to work through this closing easily. And many times you will be absolutely shocked at how much information they will disclose. Um, I hate to say this, Many listing agents will disclose too much information and they're almost doing a disservice to their clients, all right, by saying, well, I need it to be X, Y, and Z, and I need, they need this days of post-closing position. Um, I've got three offers right now. The highest one is, is you know, $30,000 over. <clears throat> First off, you never talk specific numbers, okay? Never, ever, ever talk side. specific numbers on the listing side. You're not going to, you don't want to give away um, the keys to the kingdom. Um, but there, 
I, I worked with an agent once that I thought was, it was this was the best way to ever say this, was, well, uh, without saying I need the offers to be X, well, we've priced the home appropriate to the market conditions, and our analysis of what's going on within this subdivision is that on average homes were coming in at 107% over their asking price. <laughs> Uh, in other words, you you're off at made she just made me do some math, but <laughs> I now know what I need to know. That was a very, very slick, very sly way of doing it, but it was, it was extremely effective, right? Be smart like that, <laughs> all right? Um, other ways, uh, obviously we talk about the cash-backed offers. We had the whole Connect Wednesday session on that one. Jay and I are both here for you on those. Knock, come to me, ribbon, come to Jay. Um, we, will, we will help walk you through that and go through all those items. We can probably, if Jay's not available, I know the basics of ribbon. He knows the like basics us. of knock as well. Um, so submitting those, getting those cash backed offers in or non-contingent offers. Uh, one thing that we talked about in the huddle session was with knock having the appraisal contingency. Um, you can do the appraisal gap language that's in special steps as an option instead of actually having an appraisal contingency. The seller is, or the buyer is willing to pay up to three, up to 3% over the appraised value because remember knock will cover up to 3%. So that will cut down the amount of gap and make it a zero day appraisal contingency. So it's something okay. that just came up. I'm so sorry, can you say that again? So we have the appraisal gap language, right? Everybody understands that. You know, seller will pay ten thousand dollars over the appraised value not to exceed the purchase price, do up to three percent over the appraised value not to exceed the purchase price. Because that's what Knox appraisal gap guarantee is, is up to three percent. So in that instance, I mean, you could, the, the, the buyer could potentially end up bringing a thousand extra dollars to closing instead of having to bring the entire appraisal gap because knock will cover up to 3%. Does that make sense? So there's some language that you can use there to make it so that you wipe out the appraisal contingency and the buyer still has an out. But make sure you're using the language that's in Docs Plus already. The pre-printed language that gives you the that gives the buyer the outs. I thought there was issues with the up to part. What do you mean? So, well, it means okay, I would do up to three percent, but what if I decide as the buyer, you know what, I'll just give you one percent. So, th would it that be a, a conflict between the seller and you? You can I say the buyer will pay three percent over if you want to take the up to if if they're worried about that portion of it. I'm just trying to mimic what Knox language gotcha. says mm -hmm. so that the buyer is at a very minimum amount that they'll pay. So do you get the amount from Knox before you make the offer? Or is that just You can talk to the Knox rep exactly on how that'll work. You won't know how much they'll cover until the appraisal comes back. Well, if, if you'll say 3% over appraisal value, but if Knox goes in and it underappraises, Knock will cover up to 3% through their appraisal back. So that's how that verbiage works. Mm -hmm. So you'll still only pay 3% over appraisal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. But Knock will cover it for the buyer. The buyer won't have to bring those funds out of pocket. Similar with ribbon. So there's some language that you can use to completely avoid having an appraisal contingency. So it's about the you got another question, Julia? I have two. Okay. Okay, so before we turn our purchase and sell agreement into should we into the listing agent, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Should we run that by help desk first? Before you turn your appraisal in, should you run it by the help desk? No, I would offer. say the offer. your offer. Oh. Yes. Should you run your offer by the help desk before you Just to make sure if you're sure. feeling not confident about it, yes, you can turn you can ask Jay, you can ask Probably me. For the first one or two, I, I have to one to review with Trevon right now. So okay. as soon okay. as we get out of here, I'm reviewing his okay. that he just wrote. So that's a knock backed offer. So And the other thing is is like you're saying, I called instantly the listing agent and ask them what can I do to make this limiting offer. That could backfire though if you don't offer. I mean, they could ask these crazy. Yes, they can. At the end of the day, it's it's up to the buyer, and 
your question to the client is, to our customer, the buyer is, how much are you going to feel comfortable offering gotcha. on this home? Gotcha. So another way you can word it is, um, if you find out that another buyer purchased this home for this amount, or what amount will you not be happy that you'll be mad about? So if it's a $300,000 house and they're like, well, I'll pay three, I don't want to offer but 310,000. Okay, if another buyer came in and you found out that they purchased it for 320,000, is that gonna make you upset that you didn't get this house? Got you, good verdict, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, option money's another way. Um, Talk about that. That's money that you're just throwing at the, at the offer. So especially when you have a buyer that's just fed up, throw in a thousand dollars option money, depending on how much money they have, are they willing? It's a thousand dollars to a buyer is like having another appraisal and inspection done on it, on the property. But if they purchase that home, they know that that's going to come back and be included in the purchase price, just like earnest money. Just make sure you check the box that it is to be included in the purchase price. All right. And they will get that money back if the It'll be applied is. to the purchase price. Um, well, you they, can check either box and yes. it could not be applied to the purchase price. That's true. That Which makes it even more, and more fun for the seller, I suppose, yep. more money in their pocket. Uh, if the seller can't close, they, can, they are entitled to the money back. However, they're going to have to, yeah. No, they're not going to get that money back. <laughs> okay. All right. So, I mean, the, Chances yeah, are there. let's let's get let's sue them in magistrate court for a thousand dollars. Then we'll maybe get a judgment. But yes, they get their earnest money because that's held. Okay. All right. If you, if you do option money, consider it gone. It is for the option to purchase this property. Here's some money. Yeah. So you can consider it gone at that point. All right. But yeah, the biggest thing that the listing agents that you'll find from them is a complete offer. Make sure your offer is complete so they don't have to call you and ask you questions about what this means in your offer. And what, what's missing? Um, and and I, I've got a little kind of a, for lack of a better term, checklist of, okay, for a conventional offer, these are all of the exhibits and everything that should be included. I'll, uh, I'll polish that up, make it, make it look pretty, and, and we'll include it in the, the uh, when this gets posted on the workplace. Okay. I just found out, too, by the way, um, and thank Trevon for this information, Ribbon used to have a buy box that was, was capped out at 700. They're now doing up to a million. Um, and they're going to purchase for homes that I think they were in the, you know, they wouldn't do anything older than the 1975-ish, I think, before, if I'm remembering correctly. Now they're doing, it's 1960, um, and they're doing business in seven states uh, all across the country. So if you've got somebody um, in another area or they're moving somewhere different, you can use a house in that area, other markets. Y'all got any techniques y'all want to talk about that you think might be good? I just need somebody. You need, you need clients. Well, that's that's, 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 a, that's an entirely different problem. Uh, how you're marketing yourself. Exactly. Thank you. Otherwise, I'm working. Fair enough. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Get back to work.